Hello everyone, this is Elijah with the Rideshare Guy, and in this video, we're going to be giving you a tutorial of the Grubhub customer app and showing you how to place an order with Grubhub. It's important to note that Grubhub does have two apps. They have an app for drivers and they have an app for customers who want to order food. Before we go any further, you'll obviously need the Grubhub app. So you want to go to the Play Store or the Apple Store, depending on what device that you have, and type in the word Grubhub customer app and then the Grubhub customer app is going to pop up and you want to install it. After the app is installed then you should be clear to open the app so we're going to click on open and then you'll need to sign in if you already have a Grubhub app or sign up if you don't. In either case you need to click on sign in and that'll uh, show the next steps. You can sign in using uh, Facebook, Google or you can create a, a Grubhub account. If you want to use uh, Facebook or Google, all you got to do is click on it and enter your Facebook or Google information. If you want to create a Grubhub account, you will need an email address, a password that you'll need to make, and in all cases, you'll need your phone number. Once you've signed in, you will arrive at the home screen. Now, before you do anything else and start getting your taste buds watering about the food you're about to order, you want to make sure it actually gets to you by putting in the right address. You wouldn't want someone to get some free food on your behalf, right? Well, maybe if you want to do some charity, but I'm assuming that you're hungry right now. So let's save that for another day. So you want to click on the account button at the bottom right hand corner and click on where it says saved address and phone. At the top of this screen, you'll see a plus icon next to save addresses. Click on it. And this will give you the ability to uh, manually add a new address, which you'll want to add. In addition to adding a new address, you can also add a new phone number and add notes for the driver if it's applicable. Like you can put information such as the gate code for an apartment number or just instructions that'll make it easier for your Grubhub driver to find you. You can also add multiple addresses and give them labels. So you see at the bottom it says home, work, and then you can add a custom label like mom's house or something. This is a way that you can switch between addresses so that you wouldn't have to manually input a new address in every single time if you do find yourself at multiple locations. Once you put that information in, you just click the save button. Another way that you can change your address is by going back to the home screen and right next to the search icon, you click on the little map icon or location icon, and then you can manually type in where you are or have Grubhub triangulate your position. Now for the duration of this tutorial, I've been putting my address to be a CVS that's around the corner for obvious reasons. So moving on with the tutorial, we see a few different things. As we scroll down, we obviously see some food, but uh, we see some information next to the restaurants. So for instance, we see the Raising Cane's uh, Chicken Fingers restaurant has a uh, 4.0 rating out of 55 ratings, obviously has an address, and it would cost $3.49 for a delivery fee, and it's an estimated time of 30 to 40 minutes. We also see that the Taco Bell has a rating of 3.5, only been rated 12 times, and uh, normally has a delivery fee of $3.99, but they have a deal going on where delivery fee is uh, zero. And the estimated time is 25 to 35 minutes. This is information that you can use to make an informed decision on exactly what it is that you want to eat. Now, right now we have it set to have food delivered to us, but if we wanted to, we could switch to what's known as pickup by clicking the pickup icon. It will then show restaurants that have the option to go and pick your food up available. Now for the sake of this tutorial, we're going to be focusing on the delivery option because the process is more or less identical. The only difference is when it comes to placing your order, instead of the food coming to you, you would go and get the food. But we're going to switch back over to delivery. And another way that you can find a restaurant that you're looking for is by clicking in the search icon or the search bar rather and then typing in what type of restaurant that you want. So I'm going to type in Chipotle. And there it is. Once you pick whatever restaurant or place you want to order something from, you'll be presented with some information and options. Right where it says delivery, right underneath it, you can actually change whether you want it to be a pickup or delivery right here. And you can change whether you want the order to go through right now or if you want to actually schedule a delivery in the future, which is pretty useful to know. I'm going to back out of that because I definitely don't want to schedule a delivery. Stomach's growling right now. And uh, if you want to, you can also change the address. I don't need to do that, so we're going to back out. 
And if there's any kind of deal going on, it will pop up to let you know that a, a deal is going on if you want to take advantage. So you see where it says uh, you'll get $7 off if you spend over $20 and it's uh, pickup only. That's just uh, good to know. You can also search the menu for particular things that you want. And you can browse the menu via categories by just clicking on the categories button and then choosing which one of these that you want. As you scroll down, you're going to see the prices for some things that obviously you want to order. If you've ordered from this restaurant before, then uh, your previous order will pop up asking if you want to order this again. In this case, I do want to order this again, so I'm going to click on the plus icon to add chips. And Grubhub is letting me know that some things have uh, changed with one of my previous selections. So I will need to go through the process of uh, picking the details again. So it's asking me for filling. I'm going to click the sofrita with brown rice, black beans, guacamole. My apologies if I'm making you hungry, but uh, hey, I am placing the order. And then I'm going to click on add to bag and boom, that's done. And when you're ready, you just click on view order and this will take you to the next step. Now, if you forgot something, you can just click on add more items and it'll take you back to the menu to where you can add something. Going to back out of that. Once on this screen, like before, you have the option to change order settings, which means that you can schedule a uh, delivery if you want. Uh, we don't want to do that. If you want napkins and utensils included, you will need to check this box. If you forget to check this box, it might not come with the utensil, so don't forget that. And next, we're going to briefly go over the uh, cost of uh, the delivery. So obviously, you have the cost of the food. You're going to have what's known as a delivery fee. A delivery fee, according to Grubhub, this fee covers delivery related costs for Grubhub, a service fee, and according to Grubhub, this is a fee that starts at $1.50 but will never exceed $9 and it helps cover operating costs for Grubhub. And obviously you have your tax. If at some point you want to just empty your whole bag and just start over, you can click on empty bag and uh, that will remove everything from uh, your checkout. We definitely don't want to do that. So next you have the option to uh, tip your driver. It's highly encouraged to uh, tip your driver because that helps us make money and it incentivizes us to get y'all your food in a fast and timely efficient manner. We're gonna click on proceed to checkout. And then Grubhub is just gonna ask you to confirm a few things. First, confirm your address. If you need to change it, click on change. It's gonna ask for the apartment number and any delivery instructions that you feel that your driver is gonna need. And then they'll have the option to uh, save this address to your account if it hasn't been saved. And also it's gonna ask you to confirm the phone number. If all that information is correct, you wanna click on review order. And here's where you select which type of drop off that you wanna have. When clicking on this, you'll basically have uh, two options. You can have a contact free delivery where um, the driver is not gonna come in contact with you. Or you can uh, have a contact delivery where the driver will hand it to you. If this is the case, then it will be necessary for you to leave in the notes exactly what you want. Do you want the driver to wait in the car and uh, you'll come and get the food? Or do you want them to bring the food to your doorstep? Whichever situation you want, you need to put in the notes section. And if you want them to bring the food to you, make sure they have the information they need to get to you, like any gate codes needed or any uh, instructions on how to navigate to get to you in an efficient manner. If you want a contact list delivery, then you need to click on contact free delivery and then you'll have some options within this it has front door of my house or apartment unit outside my building door in my building lobby or you can put out specifying the notes for the driver and you can also put a preference on which you prefer the driver to text you or call you upon uh, dropping off the delivery so in this case i'm going to put out specify in the notes and i'll say leave on the chair and I'll be leaving a chair for my driver to drop the food off on. Click on save and that portion is done. Next you'll need to decide exactly how you're going to pay for this. So it says your payment, you have a few different options. You can pay via credit card or debit card, Google Pay or PayPal. In this case I already have uh, Google Pay set up so we're going to leave that as it is. If you have any type of gift card or promo code, you want to enter that where it says uh, promo code. And if it's for a gift card, just click on gift card and then enter the information in. Then you can get your discount. Keep scrolling down. 
and it's just gonna show you um, everything in terms of how much it's gonna cost. And then you just click buy with whatever you selected. In my case, it's gonna be with Google Pay. Once the order is started, you'll be taken to this screen. Grubhub will display the estimated time of delivery while it's searching for a driver to go pick up your order. If at any point you need help with your order, you can click the help icon in the top right hand corner and you'll be taken to a place to where Grubhub will ask you what the issue is and you'll be given further instructions on what to do next. Once Grubhub has found a driver for you, they'll appear on the screen. If at any point you feel the need to contact your driver, you can do so via text message or call by using the icons on the screen. Once your driver has picked up your food, they will begin heading to your drop off location. You'll then receive a text message giving you the estimated time of arrival that they're going to arrive. When your Grubhub driver is about a mile or two away, then you'll get another text message letting you know that your driver is going to arrive very soon and to get ready to receive the order. Once your driver drops off your order, then this screen will appear letting you know exactly what time the order was delivered at. You will then be asked to rate your driver, your overall experience, and the restaurant. It's up to you whether you decide to do this rating before or after you decide to chow down. But it's important to keep in mind that a driver's rating plays a big role in the promotions they qualify for as well as them being able to stay on the platform. So that's something to keep in mind when you're rating. Now that that food has been deposited in our stomachs, let's do a tutorial of the overall Grubhub customer app. When you're on the home screen, you do have some filter options so you can change exactly what restaurants or convenience stores will pop up in front of you. So if we click on the sort button, it gives us some filters that we can use. So we can filter by rating, by time, by price, by distance, and also just generally what's uh, recommended. So if I click uh, filter by rating, you see how it changes exactly uh, the order of what I'm seeing. I'm only seeing the highest rating things which uh, in this case, a bunch of five-star restaurants. If we scroll over to the right, we see perks. If we click on the perks button, we only see orders that are offering some kind of deal. And if we scroll to the right all the way, we see the option to pre-order, which uh, that's just another way of scheduling a delivery like we already covered. Back out of that. And now we'll cover the icons at the bottom of the screen. So if we click on the perks button, this will actually show a list of uh, perks or deals that are going on at the moment. So we see Panera Bread has $3 off, Chipotle has uh, $7 off. If you want more details, just click on the perk and click on information. It will tell you how long this perk is going to be in effect, as well as the conditions that you need to meet in order to get the deal. If you click on the orders button right at the bottom of the screen, it will show the previous orders that you've done on Grubhub and this can be a quick way to reorder something if you're feeling lazy like me. So you can actually just come here and click on reorder and then it'll add everything that you had before to your cart or to your bag in this case. If we click on the account button, this gives us the ability to uh, change any uh, information that we see. So you can update your name, your email address, your password, your payment options. And if you're interested, you could also sign up for the Grubhub membership. If we click on the Grubhub membership, this is known as Grubhub Plus. This is basically a uh, subscription service where, where you'll pay reduced fees every time you order from Grubhub, but a subscription service will cost a monthly fee. Now at the uh, time of this recording, it's uh, around $10 per month and you get a trial of 30 days for free. But uh, keep in mind that's subject to change. So if you're ever curious, you do want to click on that so you can know exactly what's going on like today. So we're gonna back out of that. If you're feeling generous, you have the option to give a Grubhub gift card to someone, or you can redeem a gift card here. As we covered before, you can change your address by clicking on save addresses and phone. And when it comes to push notifications, you can uh, change exactly how Grubhub sends you notifications if you want notifications sent at all. Let's back out of that. And if at any point you need help, just click on the need help button at the top right hand corner and it's going to bring up a few options as to how Grubhub can help you with whatever your issue is. That covers our Grubhub customer tutorial. If you have any questions or comments feel free to leave them in the comment section below and if you're kind of curious as far as how much do Grubhub drivers actually make you can check this video out that uh, we have done where we cover the details of how Grubhub drivers pay as well as how much money they actually make. 
If you like this video, a thumbs up is very much appreciated. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new and hit that bell notification if you want to be notified when we drop another video. This is Elijah the Rideshare Guy, signing off.